Sharifa again and now in this video I'm going to talk about another theory of second language acquisition that is a little bit earlier. So this one is called universal grammar. This one was proposed by Noam Chomsky. Um, I think it's around uh, 1980s. Okay, so this is actually the continuation of the theories that he had proposed in 1950s, 60s uh, previously. This theory believes first that uh, all humans have this innate capacity that he called as language faculty that makes it possible for everyone to acquire language. This is a place in our brain since we were born. Um, it also explains why children can acquire languages heard from parents and the surrounding without even learning them. Uh, as you, all of you might have experience uh, with your L1 or your first language, that you never learn them. You just heard from your parents or your neighbor or the people around you, but and then now you become a native speaker. Uh, and this is what uh, universal grammar uh, believes because we have this capacity in our brain. Okay, and, uh, another one is that children understand grammar only by limited or fragmented uh, sources around them. Even though they only heard pieces and bits and pieces, we never understand why children uh, suddenly grow up into an adult who can speak, who can produce language very fluently. Um, and that all humans uh, have this, regardless the L1. Okay, they have this ability uh, and this is what is believed by uh, universal grammar. This is actually the underlying, underlying uh, beliefs that, proposed, that is proposed by universal grammar. The ability of human to acquire language because of what we already have in our brain since we were born. Okay, so we have understood the underlying principle of universal grammar. And just like other theories, okay, theories develop over time. And also universal grammar proposed by Chomsky and then Chomsky himself uh, fix or you know reconceptualize his theories and he used the principles and parameters to explain the newer or the later version of his universal grammar. So he used principles and parameters to explain this theory. So what is uh, principles and parameters here? So basically, universal, uh, universal grammar is a set of principles, okay? So universal grammar itself is a set of principles that are the properties of all languages. So uh, Chomsky believed that all languages have these very core principles, and it's called universal grammars. These principles, okay, and then these principles have parameters that limit uh, the choice of settings depending on the language involved. I'm going to explain later with ex uh, examples. Okay, and then children are believed to have this innate ability to understand all these principles and parameters subconsciously. They don't have to consciously learn these principles and parameters. Okay. And also the last one is that Chomsky proposed uh, that UG is the reason why children never violate the principles and never select wrong parameters. Okay, now I'm going to talk about one of the examples of the principle that Chomsky talked about. So we have here uh, the principle of uh, the elements including head. So what does head mean? Okay, for example, he believes that uh, in all language, it, for example, verb phrase, in a verb phrase, you have to have the head verb. For example, in the, work, uh, in the phrase work hard, you have the head verb work before the complement hard, but work hard is one phrase. Okay, it's called verb phrase. Uh, this includes verb, 
the head verb and also adverb. Okay, so the verb is the head verb. Also in noun phrase, every noun phrase has the head noun. For example, uh, in the phrase smart goal. So we have the goal here as the head noun. Okay, smart goal is a noun phrase and it has to have the head noun. And the head noun is the goal. Okay, uh, another example is in prepositional phrase. Uh, for example, in the phrase on time, we have the word on as the head preposition and then time uh, as part of this phrase. Okay, on time is one phrase, but we have the head preposition on in there. So this is one of the principles that Chomsky stated in his universal grammar theory, that every language always have uh, in their phrase what he calls as the head. Noun phrase has to have a noun head, a verb phrase has to have a verb head, and then, uh, and then um, prepositional, uh, prepositional phrase has the one preposition as the head. So now we all know that languages are all different. The rules of language are all different. Like, well, there are some similarities, but there are also a lot of differences. For example, English and Bahasa Indonesia, they are quite different in some parts, okay? So this differences is uh, what uh, Chomsky addressed as the parameters. We already know the principles. He believed in the, the, the existence of the head. Now, uh, what is the parameter? One example of the parameter is the, uh, the position or the direction of the head. He only recognized head initial and also head final. Okay, let's take a look at the example here uh, with the comparison between English and also French. Okay, say for example, in English, uh, there's a sentence, she calls you. Okay, as you can see here, the verb phrase calls you, okay? The verb comes first and then you, okay? Because the verb comes first before the object, okay? Uh, or the head comes first, this is called head initial, okay? Let's take a look at the comparison with French. This is actually meaning the same, elle t'appelle, okay? Elle t'appelle, uh, we have the verb phrase here, t'appelle, but actually the verb is appelle, okay? And ta, uh, ta here from uh, toi is you. So the object comes first before the verb, okay? That means the head verb comes uh, last or later, okay? This is what is called as uh, the head final, okay? And uh, according to uh, this theory, the universal grammar theory, children have this innate ability to recognize the principle and parameter and in first language unlimitedly until they become the native speakers. So somehow uh, it, it, it cannot always be explained. Children can understand these principles and parameters uh, without they realize and without they have to learn it. So uh, there is an input to their brain and then the brain process it here and then it becomes something that they can produce for communication. But the process in the head until now, it's still a mystery. Nobody knows exactly how that happened. This is just one of the theory based on the uh, phenomena, uh, phenomena that happens in the field of first language. I'm gonna give one another example of parameter here. So the parameter here uh, is about a subject uh, that sometimes is clearly stated and sometimes it's not. It, you know, some languages uh, are different. And in here, I try to compare English and also Bahasa Indonesia. So for example, in the statement like, wow, it's raining now. 
in English, the usually you usually use a uh, subject and verb, um, and we have the subject here, uh, the word it. Okay, that's the subject, and then uh, we have verb, the, the is here, and then raining. It's raining is a uh, verb phrase. Okay, so we have the subject here it. But when we, we uh, change this into Bahasa Indonesia with the sentence that has actually the same meaning, we do not always need the subject here because we can basically just say, Wa hujan. Okay? That's basically the same meaning, has the same meaning as, Wow, it's raining. And we don't need the subject. We just say, Wa hujan. Okay? Which means, Wow, rain. Right? Okay, so it that's in Bahasa Indonesia. It's not the subject is not always um, you know expressed. Just like uh, verb is not always expressed in Bahasa Indonesia. Like uh, in English we say you are beautiful, but in Bahasa Indonesia we just say kamu cantik. We don't we don't have the verb there. So uh, these uh, are called parameters. So parameters what makes uh, each language is uh, specific or unique and uh, something that is also understood by uh, children because they have what is called as LAD or language acquisition device. So uh, LAD makes children no need to learn. They just subconsciously process the input from whatever source outside and then they process it in the brain and then gradually uh, it become first child grammar and then in the end it, they become native speakers. They have the native ability of the language. As I told you before, the theory is always developed and so does UG. Okay? Universal uh, grammars develop based on uh, Chomsky's findings and also another conceptualization. So what is the later version of UG? So the later version uh, of UG, in here, Chomsky changed a little bit of his focus. So he basically said that there is no specific principles like he uh, explained before about verb phrase, about noun phrase, about the head, uh, the head final, the head initial. He did not, uh, he, he did not uh, believe that any longer. So he uh, renewed the theory by uh, stating that there is extremely general principles of universal grammar and options to be selected. Uh, so basically he believed that all languages have uh, this universal grammar, but he doesn't state specifically if it's about noun phrase or verb phrase. Okay. And there are options to be selected among uh, different languages. Okay, and also he focused more on vocabulary. So in this later version of universal grammar, Chomsky uh, focused more on the acquisition of vocabulary. He believes that vocabulary is the most important part of language acquisition because uh, acquiring a certain lexicon means that you acquire certain structure or grammar and also acquiring certain um, syntax or semantic meaning. Okay, for example, if you, um, if you know the word book, you don't only understand uh, the function of the word book. Uh, for example, you know that it's a noun, it can also be a verb, you understand when to use it, you understand uh, the meaning of it, you understand how to pronounce it, so you basically do not only understand the structure on the surface, but you understand everything about the word book and the inflection that comes with it. That it can be booked, it can be booking, yeah? So uh, that's basically um, what is believed by universal grammar, but in the later years. So it keeps developing. In summary, or in conclusion of the later version of universal grammar, Chomsky proposed that uh, that a first language learner uh, will go through three initial uh, three states. 
the first one is the initial states where uh, they already have this innate capacity that he calls as language faculty, where in, in the human, uh, there is a tool called language acquisition device. It's already there since we were born. And that's uh, actually the, uh, the thing that makes it possible for us to acquire uh, the first language, that the initial state of uh, first language acquisition. And then people will come to the uh, the next stage is the intermediate stage where um, where children will get input and then they will start uh, what is called as child grammar. So they make their own grammar and then gradually uh, develop into the final state, which is the adult grammar and where they're, they become the native speakers. So these three stages of first language is actually proposed by Chomsky in his universal grammar theory. Now, lastly, uh, to conclude this video, uh, I would like to connect uh, UG with SLA because as I have explained before, the universal grammar is more about first language acquisition. So how does this connect to second language acquisition? Because that's that's the point of our learning this theory, right? To understand how this is connected to second language acquisition. So the, uh, the existence of universal grammar is very important in the history of second language acquisition and learning theory in the teaching and learning of second language because it actually becomes the, the trigger of the foundation of three questions. The first question is about the initial state. The question that still stays until now and it's not answered yet is that do SLA learn, uh, second, language, uh, second language learners also have innate capacity or the language faculty when they start learning second language uh, in their life? Okay, that's the first question. And then the second question is about the nature of interlanguage. What is, what about the process of uh, second language learner is the interlanguage the same as child grammar uh, and then people start to uh, did study about morpheum uh, order studies uh, and then they found about natural order this is uh, this is the concept that is surrounding the interlanguage or the process uh, from from l1 to l2 this also is started from ug uh, and then the, the last question is about the final state of SLA. What is actually the final state of SLA? Can someone who learns second language become uh, native or have the native ability? The question still exists and it still remains a subject of research. So I guess that's all uh, my explanation about universal grammar. I hope you understand and I hope you learn something. I hope you take notes. And if you still have questions, confusion, or you have comments, if you agree or disagree with what Chomsky proposed, please just pop your uh, comment on the comment section below. Thank you so much for uh, your attention and I'm going to see you again. Bye.